Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, December 23rd, Christmas Eve Eve, around 10.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2021. The Reykjanes Ridge is rocking and an eruption is imminent. But the big story, winter storm could bring 10 feet of snow and rare white Christmas to parts of the U.S. Keep calm. It's boom time. Merry Christmas. And that's a boom. Santa will deliver an uncommon white Christmas to some in the U.S. and chestnut roasting heat to others. Now, Seattle and Portland are lined up to get some heavy snow in the coming days. But many people in those regions are saying poo-poo to the forecasts. Now, 70 and 80 degrees in Texas during this time are not unprecedented, but the media is going to use this to, well, global warming your ass off. Keep calm. It's boom time. Ten feet of snow? Say it ain't snow, but it is. And it's coming. And we're not bumming. Good morning, Joe. And many of us are going to be digging out in the West while some of us are going to be sweating in summer like weather. So let's take a look at the big story because that's the Western storms. We're looking at big time snow. We're looking at heavy rain. You can see that floating inland and that's been happening day after day throughout this entire month. And it's going to happen at least through the, the next week. So as we look towards the Pacific Northwest down to Southern California, we are looking at wet weather, higher elevation snow. We're looking at uh, eight feet in some spots through Sunday. So winter weather advisories, winter weather watches, winter weather warnings are in place from the Pacific Northwest through California to the Rockies. And we're going to be digging through the snow over the next couple of days. So this is the setup today. We're going to see that big rain and big snow rain spreading down to Southern California. We could even see some flash flooding in uh, Los Angeles, even San Diego, especially in those burn areas. And then we're going to be accumulating feet of snow in the Sierra Mountains. That will move further inland on tomorrow where we're going to move, see it move into the Rockies. And then another Pacific storm hits the West Coast. So again, it's that December deluge where we're seeing storm after storm. And we're really seeing those rain totals and snow totals adding up. So the rainfall for forecast through Saturday. You can see lots of dark colors on this map, up to five inches in some spots. That's half a foot of rain in some spots. Los Angeles, you're going to get a lot of rain too. And that includes Christmas Day, also Christmas Eve, Redding, Portland, San Francisco, even San Diego having some of that heavy rain. And then the snowfall forecast, generally two to three feet of snow, but some spots in the highest elevation of the Sierras would be digging out of eight to even up to 10 feet of snow. I know it is crazy. Holy macaroni, you heard it here first. Keep calm, it's crazy. And it's boom time. Santa will deliver an uncommon white Christmas. Out of new food trends for the new okay, we gotta shut that off. Soon, Sierra Nevada mountains could see 10 feet of snow, high enough to reach a second story building. <laughs> Indeed it could. And, and this is to add insult to injury. Here are the last 24 hours of powers. Let's look at the last 48, let's, whoa. Let's bring this up. And what we're going to look at is the fact that 10 feet of snow is going to be sitting on, on top of a foot or two feet already. That could be 12 feet up in Washington State, 11 feet in uh, California. And we're looking at five to six feet in our region coming soon. So before the boom, let's check out the GFS model and the newest model parsing up here. We'll just run it through. Here's December 27th, the 28th, 29th, approaching New Year's, and boom, happy New Year's. Here's the new year, and just take a look at that snow building and blowing. Let's get to the first five days of the debacle. Heavy snow moving into the Sierras. Heavy snow moving into Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Utah, Colorado. Snow moving into Arizona and the high mountains as well as New Mexico. Here is your Christmas day. We should be looking at up to four feet of snow in our region in just the next 24 hours. 
hours of powers and then more and more systems are predicted to come through we could potentially be buried in seven feet of snow here eight feet of snow in the sierras 10 feet in some places up in washington state holy macaroni shut up now i told him to stay in his hole until christmas but apparently that's not working there's that prick now Powerful winter storm brings multiple impacts from the west to the plains. Progressively colder weather systems will bring areas of rain, heavy mountain snow, and gusty winds. Heavy rain to the southwest may produce flash flooding and debris flows onto burn scars. A hello down in the L.A. area. Snow levels may bring accumulating snow to the Pacific Northwest, including the Seattle and Portland metro areas. Record-breaking Christmas, white Christmas in those regions. High winds in the plains will produce areas of critical fire weather threat. Heads up, Texas, the next of the Schmexis and other regions in the maroon. Click on your county at weather.gov for more info. Now, moving on. Fagadadoschwal, volcano update. Intense seismic activity continues. The elevated seismic activity continues. Over 2,000 earthquakes have been detected in total over the last 17 hours at 5 to 8 kilometers, suggesting the flux of magma rising within the volcano is significant and the most likely scenario of an imminent eruption is considered to occur in the Glendegalda eruption site. GPS instruments detect rapid ground deformation like a boom about to happen. That's the yellow region in the circled region. Drop down here by the seismic area and the eruption site and an uplift where the magma could be inciting new eruptions. And we are here live at the Fagradus Fall earthquake live stream. And here we are at the Fagradus Fall Iceland earthquake live stream, which is coming to you from Daily Iceland. Subscribe to the channel there. Give them a thumbs up. Tell them Diamond sent you over here in the live chat where they have been monitoring the micro-seismic tremor now for one, two, and a quarter days. And it typically takes three days before the eruption. So today, sometime, later today, let's say in about 18 hours, the eruption will begin based on historical information, not like soothsaying or anything like that, real science. And here you can see the earthquake array on the Reykjanes Peninsula that has been ongoing for 36 hours. A little uptick, we had a 3.5 magnitude happening just a few hours ago, but the micro tremor and the seismic tremor is ongoing. So we're waiting for the boom. Worldwide volcano news update. Other than Iceland, we've got Sangay to 20,000 feet, Swanoshima, Chevalush to 15,000, Fuego to 15,000, Semi Sapochnoi, Piton de la Fornas at La Reunion, France. <clears throat> this is actually a mid-ocean ridge uh, fissure eruption, similar to La Palma. A new spatter cone is forming. Nevados de Chilan, volcanic ash advisory. Nevados del Ruiz in Colombia, continuous period of tremor this morning. We're waiting for a big boom from Ruiz, potentially VEI 2 or 3. So keep a close eye on the Colombia. And Kilauea, resumption of activity at the Halemamaumau crater. Again, a lot to talk about. Honga, Tonga, Tonga, and Honga, Smokabonga, and Hapai Volcano in Tonga, north east of Australia, in fact. But Honga, Tonga, Tonga is still blowing to 34,000 feet just hours ago. So big news at Tonga. Now, solar storm may amp up the northern lights before Christmas, as well as the winter storms that are pummeling the west coast so it's a two it's a one-two punch literally now what we have lined up is a solar storm that erupted from the sun on monday december 20th may boost northern lights displays around the north pole just ahead of christmas ho 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 shut up al the solar storm was caused by a coronal mass ejection of magnitude m 1.4 and well we're waiting for it to hit us. And we can look at telemetry now. Nothing is coming. What we would be looking for is a bump up on density and speed here. Plasma density and speed will bump up. And I've just refreshed this. Once the CME approaches, we are at elevated space weather levels. 
the current plasma speed is above 450 kilometers per second or just at 450. So that's slightly elevated above, above a quiescent 300. And so that could bump up into the six, 700 mag or kilometers per second and could bring geomagnetic storm. But we've had KP0 for several, six hours over the last 24. And let's refresh this. We're still at KP1. And we're waiting for this to bump up four, five, six in the morning. Keeping a close eye. Because that could, this type of event could accentuate the snowfall totals and well, maybe trigger some booms as far as earthquakes or volcanoes. Now, astronomers detect up to 170 rogue planets hurtling aimlessly through space. This was predicted by the Thunderbolts Project and the Electric Universe model almost a decade ago. And the Thunderbolts theory is that, that well, this is all coupled with the Velis Velikovsky work back from the 1940s where Velikovsky predicted that there were planets in our solar system in close proximity. And some of those planets are rogue planets that have been recently incorporated into the solar system we now live in. And if that's the case, there should be brown dwarfs and other rogue planets all over the Milky Way galaxy. And it's been confirmed today, well, actually a few days ago, but astronomers detect up to 170 rogue planets hurtling aimlessly through space. Well, I, I do digress. They're not aimlessly hurtling. They're headed somewhere. Maybe here, woolly mammoths survived on the mainland in North America until at least 5,000 years ago, DNA reveals. So all the nonsense where you heard about mammoths, all oh, mass extinction, we overhunted them, and it was the Clovis people's fault is bullshit. In fact, it, it, listen. Macrofauna has an advantage over people. They can eat them, they can stomp them, and they can beat them. No matter how technologically advanced we think we are, we are still fooling ourselves. Because what's about to happen is a reset where our <laughs> dumb asses get handed to us, just like it got handed to the mammoths, where they didn't die out completely during the Younger Dryas event, but lived on and continued to pummel humans for hundreds of years to come. That's not dumb. That's just science. Now, golden-tongued mummies might have talked with the ancient gods. In fact, that is what they say. And some of the most amazing excavations have unearthed golden-tongued mummies in Egypt. The discoveries of these body modifications may help us understand how ancient people communicated with their gods, or not. But it's certainly a talking point it gets lots of clicks. Moving on. As we look for more clicks, we share some of the most bizarre scientific information being revealed on the planet, including the extremely rare deep sea creature found in the California Ocean, once in a lifetime event. And this, in fact, is the barrel eye fish, shown in this image from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, 2009. Another account of this fish occurred recently, and it is, well, biz beyond bizarre and spectacular, uh, and for a number of reasons. This fish has a completely transparent cranium, and its eyes are these two green orbs, not these two gr black dots. In fact, in these black interstitiuses, where we think eyeballs go, are where other glands are to detect movement. And the eyes are actually back here in the head to see very low light movement at deep depths. And this fish is so unique that the barrel eye can move these eyeballs back into the front position to look forward where it's feeding. So these rotate forward on a barrel in the head of this fish. If you think you know anything about our planet, you're kidding yourselves. Macropinna is a small dark fish with large fins, a tiny mouth, and a remarkable pair of eyes. The two green spheres in these video shots are the lenses of its tubular eyes. Behind the eyes is a set of large scales. The eyes are enclosed within a trans elongate animals with tentacles that capture prey that swims into them.
and we think that Macropinna swims into the tentacles and steals the food from the siphonophores. The shield over its eyes protects the animals with tentacles that cap. Now, this is the most groundbreaking and titillating part of the podcast, and I don't want to F it up. So let's make sure we... Now, what's about to happen is that they were trying to capture this creature. It would be the, one of the second maybe specimens captured, but it got away. And let's take a look at what happens here. ...and steals the food from the siphonophores. The shield over its eyes protects those sensitive structures from the stinging cells in the siphonophores' tentacles. It can also rotate its eyes to avoid predators or to avoid being captured by scientists. <laughs> this is Bruce Robeson at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. They missed it. Thank God. <laughs> and that's a boom to science. And the transparent cranium of the barrel live fish. And that's a boom to knowledge. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. And Nanu. And Nanu. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. If you enjoy what you saw, there are thousands of hours of podcasts because I've been doing this for years. Be safe. We love you. And Happy New Year. Mm-hmm.